I'm sure you're familiar with that sound. It's been part of our life for years. In 2019, though, I think we can do better. I'm Camille Mousset, interaction designer on the Apple design team. And I'm Hugo Ferrai, sound designer on the design team. This session is about designing great audio haptic experiences. Our goal with this talk is for you to be inspired and leave you with practical ideas about how to design great sound and haptics when used together in the right way, can bring a new dimension to your app. During the next 30 minutes, we'll talk about three things. First, we'll introduce what is an audio haptic experience. Then we'll look at three guiding principles to help you design those great experiences. Lastly, we'll look at different techniques and practical tips to make those experiences great and truly compelling. So, what is an audio haptic experience? Well, let's start by listening to a sound. OK, now let's lower this sound. What happens if I lower it even further? Whoa, it's so low, I can't hear it anymore. You know, our ears just don't register it anymore. But if you would put your finger on the speaker, you could still feel it move back and forth. We designed the Taptic engine specifically to, to play these low frequencies that you can only feel. Here it is in the iPhone, and next to it, the speaker module. The haptic sensations from the Taptic engine are synchronized to the sounds coming from the speaker. And the result is what we call an audio haptic experience. But Haptic sensations are meant to be felt, so because we are presenting this on stage and on screen, we need your help in imagining what this would feel like. We'll do our best to help you by visualizing the haptics like this, or by playing a sound that resembles the haptic, like this. We will also visualize these experiences on the timeline. And Camille will tell you some more about how that's done in a quick haptics design primer. iOS 13 introduced a new API for designing your own custom haptics. It's called Core Haptics. This new API allows you, developers, to use a Taptic engine fully in iPhone. The Taptic Engine is capable of rendering a wide range of experiences. It can generate a custom vibration like this, it looks like this, and it should sound and feel like this. So as you've seen, we're using a waveform and sound to represent haptics. As Hugo said, you need to imagine this in your hand as a silent experience. This should be felt and not heard. So we can play these continuous experiences. We can also have something that's more sh shorter and compact. It's a single cycle, and we call this experience a transient. It's much more momentary, and we it feels like an, an impact or a strike or a tap. Very momentary. And then we actually can refine it further. Moving forward, we'll use basic shapes to represent haptics in different patterns. So our transient becomes a simple rectangle. And because our Taptic engine is a, an exceptional piece of haptic engineering, we can modulate the experience in different ways. First, we can modulate the intensity or the amplitude. We can also make it feel more round or soft. At the other extreme, we can make it more precise and crisp. So this experience is possible with the Taptic Engine. 
So in the end, this completes our quick introduction to haptic design and what the Core Haptics API is all about. We have one intensity you can modulate and another design dimension, haptic sharpness, that you, can, you are in control for two types of event, continuous and transient. Now, let's look at your three guiding principles that we want to share with you today. First is causality. Then we have harmony. And lastly, we have utility. These concepts or approaches are used throughout the work that we do at, the, at Apple, and we think they can help you as well in your own app experience. For each of them, we'll look at the concept and explain through a few examples. Let's get started. Causality. Causality is about, for feedback to be useful, it must be obvious what caused it. So imagine being a soccer player, kicking this ball. What, was the, what would the experience feel like? There is a clear, a clear relationship, an obvious relationship, between the cause, the food colliding with the ball, and the effect, the sound of the impact and the feel of the impact. Now, what, what this experience sounds and feel, feels like is determined by the qualities of the interacting obje objects. The material of the, of the shoe, the material of the ball, and then the dynamics of the action. Is it a hard kick or a soft kick? And the environment, the acoustics of the stadium or the soccer field. Because we are so familiar with these things, it would not make sense at all to use a sound that is very different. Let's try it out and take it way over the top. Very strange, that doesn't really work. Now, when designing sounds for your experiences, think about what it would feel and sound like if what you interact with would be a physical object. As an example, let's look at the Apple Pay confirmation. We wanted the sound and the haptics to perfectly match the animation on screen, the check mark. So where do we start? Well, what sounds do you associate with making a payment? What does money sound like? And what is the interaction of making a payment using Apple Pay? And of course, we have to look at that animation of the check mark on screen. It should feel positive, like confirming a successful transaction. Here are a few examples of sounds that were candidates for this confirmation. This is the first one. This one is very pleasant, but it sounded a bit too happy and frivolous. Now, the next one worked really well with the check mark of the animation. But we felt that its character wasn't really right. It was a little too harsh. And then there's this one, the one that we chose in the end and that you will all know. It's not too serious, and it's clearly a confirmation. OK, so we've got our sound. Now, on to the haptics. Our first idea was to mimic the waveform of the sound because it matches perfectly. But after some experimentation, we found that two simple taps actually did a better job. Now, I like to see these as little mini compositions where we have two instruments, one that you can hear and one that you can feel, the haptics. They don't always necessarily have to play the same thing, but they do have to play in the same tempo. Now here they are together. Notice the lower sound indicating the haptics. OK, and this is then the final experience with the animation. Again, imagine feeling the taps in your hand when you pay. Next, let's look at our second guiding principle, harmony. Harmony is about things should feel the way they look, the way they sound. In the real world, audio, haptics, and visuals are naturally in harmony because of the clear cause and effect relationship. In the digital world, though, 
we have to do this work manually. New experiences are created in an additive process. The input and output need to be specifically designed by you, the developer. Let's start with creating a simple interface with the visual. We have a simple sphere dropping and colliding with the bottom of the screen. Next, let's add audio feedback. Now we choose a sound that corresponds to a physical impact or the bounds of the sphere. It needs to be short and precise and clear, but we also modulate the amplitude based on the velocity of the hit. Now let's do additional work and introduce the third sense, haptic feedback. So imagine feeling that hit in your hand. Again, we're trying to design in harmony the, the sphere hitting the bottom of the screen, so we choose a transient event with high sharpness. We also modulate the intensity to match the velocity of the bounce. We're not done yet, because it's really important to, to think about synchronization between the three senses. That's where the magic happens. That's where the illusion of a real ball colliding with the wall takes shape. So here's an example where we broke the rules and we introduced latency between the visual and the rest of the feedback. It's clearly broken, and the illusion of a real bouncing ball is completely not there. So harmony requires great care and attention from you, but when done well, can create very delightful and magical experiences. Let's look at different harmony in terms of the notion between interaction, visuals, audio and haptics, in terms of qualities and overall behaviors. We'll look at a simple green dot on screen that we'll animate and think through what kind of audio, what kind of haptics make sense with that green dot. So if we have a snappy pop or a different pulse, what kind of audio, what kind of haptics work with these visuals? What if we have a large object on screen does it sound different? Does it feel different than a tiny little dot? If we have different dynamic behavior, different energy level, a pressing, pulsating dot that really calls for attention might want different sound, different haptics. And lastly, something that feels calm or like a heartbeat warrant different type of feedback. So think about the pace, the energy level, and the different quality that you're trying to convey in your app. Design feedback that tells a consistent and unified story. Now, I will illustrate how har the Harmony principle helped us with designing sound and haptics for the Apple Watch crown. We were all used to our phones and their old school vibes coming from them. When the Apple, Apple Watch came out uh, as the first device with a taptic engine, it was the first device that could precisely synchronize sound and haptics. Now for Series 4, haptics and a very subtle sound were added to the rotation of the crown. Remember the sharp and precise haptic that Camille described earlier? That was the one that we used for the crown. But it was scaled down to match the small size of the crown. And so the haptics are felt in the finger touching the crown, rather than on the wrist. Now for sound, we looked at the world of traditional watchmaking for inspiration. We listened to and recorded all kinds of different watches, some of which were, sounded quite remarkable, like this one. And then there are other physical ob and mechanical objects in the real world that, uh, with, with a similar sound, like bicycle hubs. We wanted to find a sound that would feel natural coming from a device like this. We took these sounds as an inspiration before we started crafting our own. And then this is the result. On your wrist, it sounds very quiet, just like you would expect coming from a watch.
The perfect coordination between sound and haptics creates the illusion of a mechanical crown. And then to match this mechanical sensation, our motion team changed the, interaction, the, the animation so it snaps to the sound and the haptics when using the crown. Let's look at that. And I'll play it again. Look at the crown visualizing the haptics. The result is a precise mechanical feel, which is in perfect harmony with what you see and what you hear. Next, let's look at our third guiding principle, utility. Utility is about adding audio and haptic feedback only when you can provide clear value and benefit to your app experience. Use moderation. Don't add sound and haptics just because you can. Let's look at a simple ARKit app that we made to illustrate this point. In this app, we place a virtual timer in the environment, and the, the interaction is dependent on the distance to that virtual timer. Let's look at the video first. So in, in this app, we purposely design audio and haptic feedback to complement the AR interaction and the most significant part of the user experience, meaning moving closer to the timer or moving away from the timer modulate the audio haptic experience. The three sensors are coherent and unified. We refrain from adding other sound effects or haptic feedback to interacting with the different elements or other minor interaction in the app. It's often a good idea not to add sound and haptics. So start by identifying possible locations in your app for audio haptic feedback, and then focus only on the elements where it can enhance the experience or communicate something important. And then are you tempted to add more? Well, maybe don't. It will overwhelm people, and it will dim diminish the value of what's really important. So to recap, here are the guiding principles one more time. We spoke about causality, how it can help to think about what makes the sound and what causes the haptics. About harmony, how sound, haptics, and visuals work together in creating a great experience. And utility, of how, how looking at the experience from the point of view of the human using your app. Next, let's look at the techniques that, and practical tips that we can use with these three guiding principles to create great audio haptic experience. First, a small recap about the primitive available in Core Haptics. We have two building blocks that you can work with. The first one is called Transient and is a sharp, compact haptic experience that you can feel like a tap or a strike. The second one is a continuous haptic experience that extends over time. You can specify the duration, how long it should last. For transient, there are two design dimensions that is available and under your control. We have haptic intensity, and we have haptic sharpness to create something more round or soft at the lower value, and something more precise, mechanical, and crisp at the upper bound. Intensity changes the amplitude of the experience as expected. For continuous, we have the two similar design dimensions. We have sharpness and intensity, and we're able to create more organic or rumble-like experience that extends over time, or something that is more precise and more mechanical at the upper values of sharpness. So there are many more details and capabilities in the Core Haptics API. Be sure to check out the online documentation. Now, when designing sounds, keep in mind what will work best with these haptics. For a sharp transient, a chime with a sharp attack will probably work really well. But if we have a sound that's much smoother, using those same haptics is probably not such a good idea. So for something like this, 
a continuous haptic ramping up and down probably works better. But these are not hard rules. There's a lot of room to experiment. And sometimes you may find out that the opposite of what you thought would work is actually better. And this was the case for the Apple Watch alarm that sounds like this. For a sound like this, you may want to add a haptic like this because it pairs together perfectly. But can we make it better? Can we keep experimenting, maybe flip it around and change the timing? This creates anticipation by ramping up the, the haptics and then quickly cutting it off and playing the sound. There's a clear action reaction, and the sound plays as an answer to the haptic. This works really well for the Apple Watch Alarm. Next, it's pretty common to have a number of events back to back to convey different type of experience. In this case, we have four transient events. And we notice that when we present this to different people, they don't necessarily feel the first one. We have a first ghost haptics. So this sequence of four taps is actually reported as a triple tap only. This could be a problem or an opportunity. We could use this effect of ghost or not perceiving the first one completely as a priming effect. Let's look at the example of a third party alert on watchOS. This is the sound and the haptics of that third party notifications. So this is a really important notification that we want to make sure that user perceive and acknowledge clearly. So in, so in this case, we use our ghost effect, or a primer in this case, to wake up the skin and make sure that it's completely ready to feel what's to come. Let's listen and feel it. So in this case, we have clear presentation and recognition of our main notification experience. Next, we can also create contrast between very similar experiences. Here is the sound for the left navigation queue on watchOS. It sounds like this. With our harmony guiding principles, we end up with really nice haptics that pairs very well with that sound. So we have a series of double strike that sound and feels like this. Now if we look at the right queue, we have a similar sound, but slightly different. So we can notice the little the little difference between the left and the right on the audio. But if we continue to follow our harmony principle, with the haptics, we end up with an identical pattern between the left and the right experience. In this case, we want to add haptics. We double up the haptics from the double strikes. And then we have true contrast between left and right. Let's listen and feel what this experience. Again, we have contrast between the left and the right for very similar audio experience. So by now, you have quite a few tools to create your own experiences. We would like to show you one more example illustrating the points we made. This is a full screen effect in messages. The sound and haptics are perfectly synchronized to the animation. And it's a delightful moment for a special occasion. Let's look at it one more time. Now, if you haven't yet, I encourage you to try this out on your own iPhone to experience the haptics yourself. And now a few more thoughts to consider in addition to the guiding principles that we shared. The best results come when sound, haptics, and visuals are designed hand in hand. Are you an animator? Collaborate with a sound or interaction designer and vice versa. It's the best way to come to a unified experience. 
Imagine using your own app for the very first time. What would you like it to sound like or feel like? And then imagine using it a hundred times more. Does it still help you to hear and feel these things? Or are you overwhelmed? Experience it and take away all the things that don't feel compelling or that are not useful. And don't be afraid to experiment. Try things out. Prototype. We've seen that you may just come across something amazing by trying something new. And we're looking forward to seeing, hearing, and feeling what you will come up with in your own apps. See this URL for more information. Thank you very much.